Hey guys, welcome back into Contemporary Issue Wednesday. Today we're going to take a little bit of a theoretical departure and we're going to talk about the ways in which we can conceive about the relations between states on the international level. So we're going to be talking about realism and liberalism in the international community. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so I know what many of you are thinking. Theory doesn't really apply. We're here to learn about big news events. We're here to learn about big issues. But the reason why I want to cover this topic today is because the way in which states conceive the international order and conceive or perceive themselves in the international order really informs the way that they act in the international sphere. So to have an understanding of how states view the international sphere is a really key component in understanding how states act in the international sphere. So what we're going to do today is cover the two biggest theoretical viewpoints in international relations. And again, it's really important that we understand these because we can understand how states act. The first of these is realism. It's not necessarily an optimistic viewpoint. It's actually, it's very pessimistic. And it starts with this assumption. The world, in general, the international order is anarchic. The reason why it's anarchic or there's anarchy in the international system is because there's not one global dominant power or body that states can go to and appeal for help. So if you get in trouble in the international sphere, you can't go to the international policeman and say, hey, help me out, bail me out. And so the consequence of this is that there's a state of anarchy in the international system. So because of this, in realist theory, realists say that states, individual states, are the prime actors in the international relations sphere. And importantly, these states act out of self-interest and act out of security and power motivations. That is, states are constantly seeking to maximize their security. They're constantly seeking to maximize their power. The reason why states seek to maximize their power, seek to maximize their security, is again because there's an anarchic world. There's no one who's going to come in and bail them out. So they'll make alliances, they'll make policies, they'll pursue policies, they'll engage in behavior that maximizes their security. So importantly, that means that states, in a realist perspective, are motivated chiefly, primarily, by gaining strategic and material ends. So what this means in practice is strategically states will think about what policies will benefit them the most individually in the international sphere. Secondarily, states are going to be pursuing material interest, and that's primarily in economic realm, trade realm, natural, and other resources realm. So in the, everything they're doing, it's how can I maximize my power? How can I maximize my material capability so that I can pr project power and secure my state? So the last thing we'll say about realist, realist states and a realist ideology is they're not driven by making the world conform to an image that they want to see. That is, they're not trying to export a specific political ideology around the world. What they're most concerned with is how can I project an increase my own state's power. If the world looks one way or the other, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is how, the, how that world impacts my material capability, my security, my power. So it's, it's kind of non-ideological in the sense that they're not wedded to, they don't have to be wedded to a, a specific political belief or a, a specific political system. Now we're going to transition to liberalism. Liberalism or liberalist does kind of embrace the, the anarchic system, says there is anarchy. However, it says that states are not the only primary actors in the international realm. So they point to inst international institutions, they point to international corporations, transnational bodies that actually have a lot of weight, a lot of power, a lot of impact in the international sphere. So it's not just a state-centric point of view. Crucially, liberalists also believe that states can sort of transcend this power struggle, right? Because realists would always think that states are just engaged in power struggles with other states, and that's going to inevitably lead to conflict. Liberalists think that they can transcend this power struggle and actually move towards peace and cooperation. So how do liberalists think this can actually happen in the international arena? The biggest reason they think or the biggest way or policy they pursue is interdependence. Liberal ideology says that states should seek to become more interdependent with one another, chiefly economically but also socially and culturally. States should seek to ingratiate themselves with other states. The theory behind this being if, if you're more interdependent with other states, you'll be less likely to engage in war for it warfare and 
you'll start to, the states will start to look more and more like each other as they become more and more interdependent. Liberalists also pursue policies of institution building and bringing more and more people into institutions, making worldwide institutions like the UN, like the World Bank, like the IMF, very powerful so that it increases international cooperation within these institutions. Liberalists also believe in fundamental values of human rights and human dignity. So here we see a little bit of a departure from the realist point of view, which doesn't really care too much about what individual states have as their political systems, if they're authoritarian, if they're totalitarian, it doesn't matter as much as how is my power in relation to yours. Whereas liberalists say, actually, we need to respect human rights, we need to respect human dignity, and that needs to be something that we work towards becoming universal in the international sphere. Finally, liberals believe in the democratic peace theory, and this theory basically says that democracies are less likely to fight one another, so that if we can carve the international system to have more and more demo democratic states, we'll have less warfare because liberalists believe democracies are less likely to fight one another, and so they will push for an and exporting of democratic values onto states that aren't so democratic. So that's it for today, guys. If you're thinking about realists, if you're thinking about states that are acting in a realist way, think about states that are pursuing their own self-interest, states who are trying to maximize their security and their power and who are trying to tip the balance of power in particular regions to their favor. When you're thinking about liberals, think about people who are trying to pursue universal human rights interdependence and cooperation on the international sphere. Now, does this mean that one is a little bit more realistic, one is a little bit more idealistic? I would argue yes, although many liberals would argue that actual liberal theory does a better job of explaining how we've gotten to where we've gotten to in the 21st century and that actually interdependence and international institutions have played an important role in drastically reducing warfare and the casualties in warfare, but realists would say, look, fundamentally still at the depths of everyone's foreign policy, of all nations' foreign policy is self-maximization of power, self-interest, material interest, these types of things. What we're going to do next week is actually use these ideologies as a template to engage in one of the biggest foreign policy decisions or issues for many states today, and that is the Syrian civil war. So we'll look at how liberals would engage or act, react to the Syrian civil war and how realists might react to the Syrian civil war. All right, guys, that's it for today. What do you think? Are you a realist? Are you a liberalist? Comment below. Let me know. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, reality always trumps ideology. Mm -hmm.